just starting as we so often do, just going from side to side. And this is moving all your energies, it's just uh, taking you away from your everyday activity and just setting the scene for um, the yoga ahead. And then come to gently Come to centre and stillness. Lift and roll your shoulders. This opens the gateways um, of energy travelling from the body up to the head, physically, but also mentally and emotionally. And lift and roll your shoulders again. And then inhaling, raising your arms. Clasp and reverse. Press your feet down. Press the backs of your hands up. Breathing out, very slightly come to a lateral turn to one side. Inhaling, come to the center, tummy in. Breathing out, come to the other side. Your head is supposed to be in between the center of your arms. Mine doesn't always go, come to the center. Breathing out, very gently turn to one side, as little or as much as you would like. Come to the centre. And breathing out, come to turn to the other side. And come to the centre. Press your feet down, press your hands up, and slightly look up. So this becomes a back bend, and you lift your diaphragm and feel the stretch in the front of your body. Bring your head back to center and test your balance by just lifting your heels. This is engaging the left and the right hemispheres of the brain. And then breathing out, just lower your feet and lower your hands to shoulder height. Breathing out, turn your head and look beyond the third finger of one hand. Come to the center and breathing out, turn and look beyond the third finger of the other hand and come to center. Lower your hands, lift and roll your shoulders and press your hands on your waist as you breathe out and just bend your knees, your bottom goes away from you and you'll find that your tummy or your abdominal muscles engage slightly. This engages your abdominal muscles with the core. Press your feet down and come up to standing. Lift and roll your shoulders. And then clasp your hands behind your back and just feel the opening of your shoulders. The inner smile, the inner smile. <laughs> Thank you. Breathing out, turn slightly to your left. Breathing in, come to the centre. And breathing out, turn slightly to your right. And then come to the centre. Just explore lifting your arms behind you. If this isn't good, you can always hold your wrists or hold somewhere along your arms towards your elbows. And then just relax your hands and lift and roll your shoulders. Sliding your hands down your legs to your shins, to your mid shins. Press your hands into your shins and lengthen your spine. Breathing out, bend your knees and bend your elbows. Chin comes to the chest. This is activating the vagus nerve. Inhaling, press your hands into your shins as you straighten your legs a little bit and feel the length of your tailbone to the top of your head, your chin is in. Stay here as you breathe out. And breathing in, bend your knees, 
press your feet into the ground and roll up vertebra by vertebra. You can use your hands to trace along the front of your body. And once you get up, lift and roll your shoulders once more. And then inhaling, raise your hands up. You can hold your thumbs, just look up and again feel that length at the front of your body, pressing your feet down, looking up. Bring your head to the centre and lower your arms. And then lift and roll your shoulders. And then once more, we're going to do this again, but we switch from what we have been doing, which was Ayurvedic, to Chinese, which I know is very much, <laughs> very much a Mickey thing. So this is the Qigong, but um, I'm classing it as yoga, which is a Qigong uh, practice. It's one of the only practices. So hands below the Dantian, very similar to the last one, but there are differences. Inhaling, raise your energy, and then breathing out. Reverse your palms as we did before, as we go up. And you'll think, oh, this is exactly the same. Breathing out as you go to one side. Breathing in as you come to the center. And breathing out as you go to the other side. Breathing in as you come to the center. And again, this is the same, breathing out as you turn to one side, a rotation. Breathing in as you come to the center and breathing out as you turn to the other side. Come back to the center, lower your arms, about chest height, reverse them down. Step your feet out beyond hip width apart and start to bend your knees as you come down. Now, how far you come down is up to you. You can come down a little bit, or you can come down to a full squat. And I know, Patsy, that your squatting is just your forte, but it's not my <laughs> knees very good at this. Francis, I don't, don't know. So come to your squat. Now, this is stretching your lower back. Very good for your hips and your lower abdominal organs, bringing blood to them. But if you're thinking, I can't bear it here, then just raise your knees and come up slightly. But in any case, put your hands on the ground to support you to gently start to lift up. Bring your feet parallel. Separate your hands and clasp your um, calves at the back of your legs as you bend your knees, bend your elbows, and almost like a deep skiing squat, Squat down as little or as much as you would like. Let your head drop, your chin comes down slightly towards your chest. And then release all of that. Slide your hands to your shins at the front. Press your feet down as you're rolling up vertebra by vertebra back up to standing. And then lift and roll your shoulders. So this is really very true. Um, um, Qigong practice, you're flying, we've done this before. So this moves every joint in the body. So I'm bending my knees and that's putting pressure on the ankles and the feet and then lifting up. So it's the shoulders, the elbows, the wrists, going through to the fingers. You're bending your knees, which is putting your abdominal control on. You're lifting your ribs up as your flight so you're imitating a bird, really. You can bend your elbows to lead with the elbows if you want a subtle difference. You're um, increasing your circulation. Also, as you lift your arms up and you are certainly helping your respiratory function, it's uplifting as you're lifting your diaphragm. The heart connects to the hands, so you're connecting to your sense of touch. Um, your shoulders, of course, connect through to your neck and um, you lift your arms, elbows as high or as low as you want. So you can be a bird flapping furiously or you can be one that's higher up and just taking uh, the wind for minimal movement. And then just come to finish your last bird uh, flap. Come to bring your hands below your navel, so your dantian, 
connecting to your center and both in um, uh, yoga it's the hara and here it's the dantian and then breathing in bring your hands halfway up and then just literally over your head strange exercise it breaks the electrical connection between you and the outside world so it's like cleaning your magnetic field bringing your hands down cleaning your aura it's another word for it and if you think of all the waves of energy around us like radio waves and television it's a way of disconnecting and calming ourselves from the massive electrical energy around us so it's boosting in a way your immune system and then bringing your hands once more to the dantian bringing your hands to your waist and just opening your arms so here you are working on opening your lungs as you breathe but you're also opening your um, lymph system under your arms so your upper body lymph system You've also got a proliferation of lymph around here as well, extending up to the throat. Um, but um, you're opening that um, space. And even if you haven't got lymph um, nodes for whatever reason, any surgery, then your energetic pathways are still very much um, there. Um, so you are again boosting your uh, system. And then just bring your hands to the heart. And we start our practice as we gently bend our knees and come down to lying on the mat. Your knees can be bent if that's better for your lower back, or you can just be lying straight out. And coming to lying. I'm going to have my knees bent. And I'm going to have my knees with constructive rest, but do feel you can lie and your knees together. And just connect with your breath by placing your hands on your abdomen once more and your um, well, abdomen, not waist, and elbows out to the side. And just connect to your breath, noticing that as you breathe in, your abdomen just raises slightly upwards and your ribs expand slightly sideways and outwards and then as you breathe out your tummy or your abdomen your navel just slightly falls away from your hands and you can explore that sensation a little bit further by sliding your hands up to your lower ribs which means that your elbows go out slightly wider and you're stretching once more into the lymph system again, stretching out the elbows. And here you can actually begin to feel the ribs expanding outwards. Imagine breathing into your hands. It's a very comforting feeling as your ribs are supported. Your interconnect, your intercostal muscles and all around where the diaphragm is, you, you've got a lot of connected tissue. And this tissue, as you breathe, this connected tissue, actually connects to your heart, the uh, muscle, the tissue surrounding the heart. So just by breathing, you're having a direct effect on your heart. It's still very interconnected in very, very forced chakra chakras. They are actually very interconnected the respiratory and the cardiac functions. And then gently bring your elbows in. You can either keep your knees bent or you can um, slide the legs out along the ground. But whichever option you choose, you're going to bring your left knee into your chest. Hugging it in as little or as much as you would like. And this is beginning to open up along the, your back and along the left side of your back in particular. As you're lying on the ground, your muscles and your skeleton um, aren't having to support you as they do normally. And the muscles are just relaxing. But in the case of the left side, the muscles are relaxing, but they're being 
stretch, they're being in space on the left side. As we stand up and we move around, we can compress along the spine and we can compress particularly at the base of the spine as the nerves go through and come through towards the area. So it can lead to all kinds of conditions, including sciatic type lower back pain. So now just still holding your left knee, drop or slide your hands to the back of your left thigh and just gently extend your left foot upwards. You can still keep bending your uh, left knee. And just explore our circulation and again as we extend our left heel and gently point the left toes to the ceiling and extend the heel, point the toes. And as you extend the heel for this last time, just feel the stretch along the back of the leg, all the way up, going into the sciatic nerve, and then just gently circle your ankle in one direction. Again, you're beginning to boost up your circulation. And then very gently circle your ankle in the other direction. And then bring your foot back to the center. And we touch once again on Chinese medicine as you stretch the toes out, opening the base of the toes as they connect to the foot. And this connects, opens your um, lung meridian. So again, boosting your respiratory and cardio functions and then just relax your toes. The next part is optional. You can slide your hands up the back of your leg as little as much as you would like. Just bringing the leg slightly towards your face, your knee can be bent. And just again, stretching to how it feels good for you. And if you want to particularly engage your abdomen, I'm going to drop my hand behind my head to support my head and neck, to lift my head up as I breathe out. Nikki might want to hold her um, neck with both hands, being stronger in her abdomen, her abdominal muscles, and just lift her head up. But just lift your head and then feel the muscles engaged along the core and then breathing out and lower your head back down to the ground. And then hug your left knee into your chest. And just for a moment, turn your knee to the side, your left knee, and place your left foot on top of your right leg because so you're opening your knee out to the side. This is a very gentle, simple movement, just beginning to access a little muscle called the piriformis muscle, which sits on the outside of the hip, joining one of the muscles that joins the hip, the outer uh, top leg to the, the hip. And this, if it gets compressed, which it can do very easily, it can very much be indicated with our back issues. And just rock your right leg from side to side, your right knee from side to side, which will bring your left knee with it. And you're just beginning to massage very gently across the base of the back and the top of your bottom. And then just very gently bring your hands underneath your left thigh, lift up your left leg, and place your left foot back on the ground. Place your hands on your abdomen once more, and just let both knees drift in the same direction to one side. Slightly engage your abdomen to come back to the center, and then relax, drifting both knees over to the other side. Your hands can stay on your abdomen, you'll feel your abdomen sliding under your hands, you're massaging your abdomen as well as massaging your lower back. And then optionally, you can introduce your neck movement. So as your knees are moving from one direction to the other, your head can optionally move away from the direction of your knees. So you're moving them at the top and the bottom of your spine in a very safe movement because your spine is being so supported by the ground underneath you. And then coming gently back to the center, make any adjustments to your feet that you feel you'd like to. Keeping the left leg either straight along the ground or your left knee bent, left foot on the floor. Pick up your right knee and hug your right knee very, very gently into the chest. And feel that stretch on the right side. You're giving space all the way along your right side, around your right lower back. 
how much you have your name to your chest is up to you. And just enjoy breathing and relaxing. The muscles along your back can, are heavy duty muscles. And actually, if you had some kind of back wiper, they would take almost up to 15 minutes to begin to seriously, they've got into spasm, seriously relaxing, it's about 10 to 15 minutes. You might get stiff being on the ground for that long, but just as a reminder that just a few seconds is very releasing. And then dropping your hands to support underneath your right thigh, clasping underneath your right thigh, very gently extend your right foot upwards. You can keep a bend, keep the knee soft, and then extend the right heel. Feel that stretch all the way along the back of the leg. And point the right toes and extend the right heel. Point the right toes and extend the heel. And gently point the toes. And then begin to circle your right ankle in one direction. And notice in your circle where you skip, if you skip, I definitely skip, I skip at the corners, which reflects that I'm not using my muscles 100% as I should be. And then just very gently circle your ankle in the other direction. And then as we come to stretch our toes out, coming kind of dipping into Chinese medicine, this, the Chinese view, is one of the great immune boosters, opening the lung meridians, and then just relax your toes. And you might want to stretch your toes out again, and then just relax them. Slide your hands up the back of your leg, a little bit or a lot, bring your right leg towards you. Your knee can still be bent, and just feel that stretch. You can stay here, or you can include an optional Lift up the head. You can either hold onto your head and neck or just hold onto your leg. Breathing out, just lift the head up and feel the abdominal muscles engage, your core muscles engage. And then breathing out, just relax your head back down to the ground. Slide your hands back down your right leg and open your right knee to the side, placing your right ankle on top of your left leg. And then just resting your hands on your abdomen or you can rest your hands palms down on the floor to just gently sway your both knees from side to side and you're beginning to massage across the lower back area. And again, this figure of four movement is helping on the outside of your right hip, your enormous muscle. And then very, very gently take your hands to support under your uh, right thigh. Lift off your right ankle and place your right foot on the floor. So both feet are on the floor, both knees are up towards the ceiling. Just rest your hands once more on your abdomen. So just gently rock both knees from side to side. The knees move in the same direction. Your head can join in by turning your head and therefore your neck away from your knees. Moving across the back of the head. Again, your head supported. The weight of your head is being held by the ground. And as you move your head from side to side in a very gentle movement, coordinating with your knee movement, not only are you moving the base and the top of your spine, but you're Beginning to balance your right and your left hemispheres. You might need to do this for quite a few times for total balance, but it's not in the right direction as you begin to release the tension across the neck muscles. Come to the center with your knees, hug one knee and then the other knee into the chest, and just slightly move it walk from side to side, or you can hug your knees in. And just let them still hold your movement slightly away from you. Freestyle movement or circle your knees. And then hugging the knees into the chest, come to a seated position, however this works for you. Either roll to the right away from the heart, 
or just gently hug the knees in and rock slightly to rock up to a seated position. But whatever works and suits you to come up to a seated position. And then just come to a cross leg position. And resting your hands, however they're comfortable, either up, down, or in your lap. I like to hold my knees. And just have a sense of slightly moving from one side to the other on your bottom. And just notice how far you can move before you start to fall over. You've got to engage your muscles to stop that tilt over. In, as you come to centre, breathe in and lengthen your spine and then breathing out just tilt the other side. You just notice when you start to engage your muscles to stop you falling over. And as you come to centre, just tilt slightly backwards. Notice when your muscles engage. Come to the centre as you breathe in and lengthen your body. And then just breathing out slightly, come forward. And just again, notice how far you can come. And then just come back. And now, sitting up, lengthen your body. Tummy or abdominal muscles come in slightly. About, when I say come in, just engage your muscles about a, a tenth almost of their capacity, just to protect your lower back. And place your hands on the ground and start to walk the hands out. They might not go very far. Always focus on the length of your back from the base of your spine up to the top of the head. And then just, I'm not going to come very far. I can feel this in my hands and hips. And then when I'm settled, I'm just going to bring my chin towards my chest once more, the leg from the back of my neck, activating the vagus nerve, which actually calms your nervous system down. It's anti-inflammation. And coming forward anyway is anti-anxiety. So just spend a couple of breaths coming forward. Tummy or abdomen comes in slightly to allow you to walk your hands back. Hands back onto the knees or legs from the body. And then just slide one hand and lift my left hand out slightly to the side. And lead with the elbows, you lift your right arm up, chin tucks in. And feel that lateral stretch once more. Take it in and an out breath. You can either look up, chin down, or you can turn your head and look towards your your arm on the ground. Soft your neck, tummy in. Lead with the arm as you come, and the other as you come back up again. And then slide the other hand out, leading with the elbow. As you lift your elbow up, you can either keep your hand um, as you slide along, or you can come onto your elbow. Either looking up, chin tucks in, or looking down to your hand on the ground, whichever works for you. Coming in, coming up, hands on the knees. We'll just do a couple of seated cat cows, breathing in, sit up, breathing out, chin comes to chest, your elbows. Can I come out or we can just hold into your lower knees. Inhaling, sitting up a little bit. If you sit up too much, you can tense your back, breathing out, rounding your back, chin to chest, encouraging the breath to, or the focus of the breath to be at the back. Breathing out as you round and skin space to your vertebrae. And then come to a seated position. Hands underneath your thighs as you come to kneeling and come now to a very, very gentle cat cow position. Taking the time to set your fingers, your thumb and your second finger are really the controllers, the master controllers controlling your weight. Take your knees to where you want to and just start by rock by baby, just gently swaying the hips from side to side. You can pick up the movement to make it slightly more exaggerated or just stay with a gentle drop from side to side. You're beginning to move the energy in your lower abdominal area, getting blood into that lower area, supplying your organs. Very safe. Your heart is parallel to the ground. 
stating the obvious, but then perhaps not so obvious is when the heart is parallel to the ground, it's got less work for the heart to do. So your circulatory um, system is is it's at least one of the very least stressful movements of the heart. It's, it's where animals are, their heart is parallel to the ground. Your, your heart doesn't have to pump up quite so much as when you're sitting or standing. So then it therefore becomes quite healing. And then come to the centre, inhaling, dipping your back, and you're looking either up if that's good for your neck, or look along around if that's not good for your neck, and breathing out either leading, initiating movement from the tailbone, and as you round your back, chin to chest. Some people like to feel as they come to dip their backs again, but when they're rounding, they've got a magnet being put on the centre of their back and they're being picked up centrally, but most yogic. Uh, instructions are that you initiate the rounding from the base of the tailbone, back of cat going all the way up to the top of the head, chin to the chest, and inhaling. You're beginning to warm through the spine, stretching out one way at the front and then stretching out at the back. And as you round your breath, you go towards the current of the back, kidney and the middle, and sitting on top of that. And one more time, as you're dipping your back. And as you round this time, tuck your toes, tummy or abdomen comes in, slide your hands back slightly to get best grip, lift one knee and then the other, push your bottom away from your hands and begin to straighten your legs. And then onto your foot position, I'm going to make my feet wider. Your heels don't have to touch the ground. And then I'm going to bend one knee and straighten it slightly and then the other knee is called walking the dog. And you can still move your bottom from side to side. You can move, bend both knees if you want to, and straighten both knees. And then bend and straighten. And then just bend both knees and come back to kneeling on the ground. Notice that your um, toes get stretched temporarily, so you're in your lung with it. And then move your hands to the right to bring your left foot up. And then hands go either side of your left foot. And you're just going to explore stretching into the left side. Your knee can go, your knee can go beyond your 90 degrees because your hands are holding your weight. And then coming back to your 90 degrees, you can go to slightly straighten your Front left leg out slightly, straighten your way off the back of the leg. You can explore the ecstatic, you can come just slightly forward again, just again stretching into the hip. And then very gently come to the center so your knees at 90 degrees, and then slide your left leg back. Once more, come to rock a bye, baby. Just having that fluid movement. Maybe moving your hips from side to side. <laughs> My watch is telling me all kinds of odd things. I'm sorry about that. And then move your hands to the left to slide your right leg up. And down the side of the right foot. Maybe you want to move your right foot slightly out to the side. Better support and balance and then explore coming forwards and explore coming backwards. As little as much as you'd like. The foot up. Coming forward as much as you like here. Beyond your 90 degrees, put your hands are supporting your weight. You're opening your inner groin here. And the inner groin again, Tunes into part of your immune system at the lower lymph level. Um, and just coming forward. And then just bring your right foot back, your back into cat, just move just slightly side to side. Bring your hands back towards your knees, tuck your toes, tummy in, and then come to. Um, 
upwards to come to a forward, move your feet to your hands, your hands to your feet. You can soften your knees and just hold your elbows and just again hang. You can slightly move from side to side. As your knees are bent, your knees and upper thighs are supporting the weight of your torso. If you're finding that this is too much for your pressure in your head, then come up. But otherwise, just enjoy slightly moving your weight from foot to foot, slightly swaying from side to side, really stretching out the back as your back is supported, your torso is supported by the, your legs, the tops of your legs. And then dropping your hands and taking your time to really bend knees, roll up vertebra by vertebra, feel that you're like a string of pearls stacking your vertebra on top of one another. Coming up vertebra by vertebra to standing. And now we're up. Lift and roll your shoulders and explore that movement. Just slightly open your palms. You're opening the inner shoulders so this connects into the head of the neck again. And just explore moving from side to side. So you're exploring your foot movement where we naturally place the weight of our feet. And this can be quite interesting because none of us is balanced and it just gets um, opens us and reminds us of where we place our weight so that when we come back to normal standing we have a greater in theory awareness of where our center is and then I don't like this at all slightly come back onto the heels notice when you're beginning to tense your muscles like instantly out of my comfort zone and then come slightly forward and again just notice where your toes grip where they don't grip and then if you're imagining coming to the centre, you can do several visualisations, but one is there's a cross at your big toe, your little toe, and then in the centre of your heel. Or you can imagine four crosses at either big, little toe, and then either side of your heel. Just feel that you're bringing the weight centrally down. Uh, you're stacking up your body. So just check that you're stacking up your body. Place your hands on your waist, on your outside of your hips, and just press your hands in. That pressing in has a sense of lengthening your body. You can tap your um, hips or you can just press in and just lengthen. Bring your hands just below your tummy or your um, navel, your dantian. Press in, this lengthens you. Imagine placing, well, you can place a physical hand at your chest and imagine that from your chest to your navel, it's not crumpled, it's, there's, it's straight. This is lifting your diaphragm. And lifting your diaphragm aligns you perfectly. Just lift and roll your shoulders and just hands by the waist. And then turn your head gently from side to side. And then bring your head back to centre. And imagine that you've got a piece of string or ribbon running all the way through your centre and someone's holding it at the top. You're like a puppet. You're perfectly aligned. So this is perfect alignment. If your bones are stacked up properly, um, it's very much less, uh, more efficient for the body and it's less um, strain on the body. So bring your thumbs together and just lift your thumbs up and carry on our swaying from side to side movement. So this simple movement is connected to Ayurveda, which is the medicine side of yoga. And it is, um, again, distributing all your energies. Uh, it would be a simple explanation. So it's very healing, calming. It's a reminder that like a tree, the strength of a tree doesn't come from its rigidity, but it comes from its ability to be flexible as it sways in the breeze. And this is called swaying palm. And then stretch up, either looking ahead, or if your neck will take this, look up towards your fingers. Bring your head back to centre, and then gently lowering your arms back down by your side, and just lifting and rolling your shoulders. 
So Nikki is much better at this than me. Uh, balance, true. So I'm going to be doing very much a cheeks version by opening my leg to the side and keeping my big toe probably connected to the floor and my heel almost on my other foot as a token to a uh, tree. Whereas Vicky is going to demonstrate so beautifully. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. You're all beautiful. Look at you. I mean, that's brilliant. Well done. Um, so your minds are much more balanced than me. You can uh, console yourselves. Uh, it reflects a left-right brain balance. You can have your hands as Nikki's got them. You can have your hands in the other mudra, thumb and finger together. You can have your hands up and, uh, together, wherever it feels. So in this position, you can't think of much else. And you are balancing your left and your right brain hemispheres. So it is an interesting exercise. And stay here for however long you want to to then just release your hands and release your leg and take an interim, just very, very gentle side to side. And then come to the other side. Uh, you can always hold on as well, by the way. Um, so you can take your foot to the other side. So, Again, the ideal tree is to open your leg out. You can almost run your hand down your thigh. But again, that's more difficult sometimes. It's just a reminder. And the other thing that I don't think applies to us is that you'll see people doing a beautiful tree where they have got their weight in and they're pushing the standing leg out and that's no good. But I don't think we're there, we don't need to worry about that because it puts pressure on the hip. So stay however long you want. And then when you're ready, come back down to both feet on the ground. Once more, go from side to side. And we're going to bring our hands together at the center. And come down as we bend our knees to a pose called Dri Pada Pitam, which is otherwise known as bridge, and which opens the throat and the front of the chest. So come to however you want, back down to the ground. And as always in yoga, there's always a choice. So I'm going to do the soft version of Dri Pada Pitam. Dri is two, Pada is feet. And um, kiss them, I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, it's bridge pose. So I get to do the soft version where I use my hands um, above my head and lift up. And there is a stronger version, which is a more static version. So I possibly think you might do the stronger version. And the soft version, we're all starting with our knees, then feet hip width apart. Here, you do actually want to keep your feet in line with your you don't want your knees to splay out, hands down. I'm going to press my feet down, lift my bottom slightly, knees go ahead of me, uh, me and I lift my arms up, my chin tucks down, my elbows going to be bent, I only lift up as much as I want to, and then breathing out, I begin to lower my arms down, my back down, my bottom down, and then my hands down. And I take a recovery breath in and out. This is also strengthening the lower back. Press my feet down, lift my bottom slightly, raise my arms up, chin comes down, elbows can be bent. You can lift up as much as you like, but try and make sure that your knees are not splaying out. And then breathing out as you lower down. And then hug your knees into your chest. Soles of the feet to the ceiling in a slight V and hands, palms together through that V. You can stay here or if you want to do an extra pose, just lift your head slightly towards your hands. Lower your head back down to the ground. Bend your knees in. Lower your feet back down to the ground. Hands, palms down. And once more, press your feet, lift your bottom slightly, engage your perineum or your bullet raise your elbows above you, chin tucks in, 
lifting as little as much as you would like, and then start to breathe out, and then start to lower your bottom, your arms back down to the ground. And once more, hug one knee and then the other knee into the chest, just rocking from very gently from side to side. Now, I don't often invite you to come onto your tummy, but this sequence does give that invitation. So you'll do a very, very gentle modification. So roll to your right side, however you want to get there. And then roll, we're only going to be onto our tummy, so this is optional, if you don't want to come onto your tummy, that's fine. Come onto your tummy. And we're just going to do a very, very gentle. By the way, coming onto your tummy does have one advantage, which is that it's very good for tummy fat. Not that uh, any of you got that, but it uh, does have that advantage. So just come to um, hands can be relaxed, elbows can be out to the side, and you can place your forehead. On, my, on your folded hands or even make a fist. And then my knees are wider apart, they come out nice, nice, lean, lean, lean. Lift your feet up and just very, very gently sway your feet from side to side. Feel that you can adjust your knees if you want to, slightly closer together or slightly wider. Very helpful for the lower back. You can um, move your feet if you want to from one to the other, stretching your ribs. It's um, moving the back in a slightly different way, still supported by the ground. And then just keep your feet still and take an in and out breath. And then gently lower your feet. Stretch your right foot, tuck your right toes underneath. Stretch your right heel away from you and lift your right leg. Your right heel stretches away. This is going into sciatic movement. And just release and relax the right leg down. Drop the right heel out to the side and the left and wobble your bottom. And then tuck your left toes underneath. Your left heel extends up to the ceiling. Actually lift your left leg and extend your left heel away from you, stretching out, releasing the hip space. Drop your left leg, let both heels drop out to the side and wobble your bottom. Slide your hands from underneath you, bring your hands back, elbows in to again not splay out, press your hands down, Come up to kneeling and then very gently widen your knees and come to a supported child by having perhaps, well, however you want to, the maximum support I've got my hands on top of one another, fists, or I can have my hands um, on top of one another, or I can just stretch my hands out, which is coming down further for child, or I can have my hands behind me held up. You just take a moment or two to reverse the movement that you've done. And then very, very gently feel that lovely stretch, your vertebra opening all the way along your spine. Tummy in as you bring your hands back and then come to a seated position. Your feet come out in front of you. Lift the flesh up from under the bottom. Hands, well, classically, they're fingers in front, but just whatever suits you. Toes up and just lift your chest and slightly lift your chin and slightly lift your eyes. You're disconnecting the eyes from the um, parts of the brain that connect to our stress centers. So, again, this becomes a mindfulness exercise in de-stressing, but a yogic exercise and lifting from the uh, diaphragm, which opens out the chest and which is very uplifting for the mood. 
and act as a counter pose from the child's pose that we've done. And then just very gently come back to center. And this time we're going to come with both legs out of the V. If you want to check your bottom, then that's absolutely fine. And press, just gently press your hands either on the ground or just on your legs, tummy in, and turn slightly towards the left leg. If you, Nikki might want to just raise her arms, hold her thumbs and come straight down. I'm going to do the therapy version where I bend my elbows and I slide my hands down the leg. I'm only coming to where it suits me. So it might be the shin. It might be down a little bit further. Um, but wherever you are, just feel that you're lengthening along the spine and then you're just relaxing forward. So this is a forward bend. It's common to the nervous system. And of course, you're opening your inner thighs or your inner groin. So this again comes on tuned back to the limb system. Tummy comes in to support you as you slide your hands up. Come to the center, sit up. You can raise your hands again. As you turn towards your right side, I'm going to bend my elbows to make it a softer descent of my back. Nikki might want to come straight forward to slide the hands down, come to the other side. The stretch that you might or might not feel on your inside thighs, the upper groin, but they, especially if you've got your heels extended, is something called the psoas muscle, muscle, which is a whole chapter, but it's one of the major muscles going along the inside of the leg and coming through the hip. But this is activating um, to a very gentle extent that psoas muscle as well as being common to the nervous system. Tell me as you slide your hands up and you come up right. Just support your legs under. So take your hands under your legs to support them as you bring your hands in. Just bounce your legs, getting the vibration going. And then just either hands either side, palms down or hands on your legs. Sit up straight, extend your heels, and we're going to come to a forward bend. So you can either um, come with your hands up, and come straight forward, but again, I'm going to just soften that by bringing my elbows in and then sliding my hands down as little as much as I want. If you really are coming down, you can take hold of your big toes, you can hold the outside of your feet, or just hold wherever your hands come, which happen to come. Again, a forward bend. Calm the nervous system, your chin is in towards your chest, so you have an effect on the vagus nerve, the back of the neck, the stretch. The blood is going in free flow all the way along the spine, the back. If you're being very mindful, your legs in the front, you almost feel your leg in your spine, your leg in your front, that's a bit hard to do. Get that front length as well. It's, it's a very gentle, soft. Your nervous system is calming down. It has an effect on your nervous system. When your left and your right brain hemispheres are balanced, as we've been doing, and also now we're calming the nervous system, your creativity and your thinking process gets a reset. It's a reset for the body and for the mind. And then sliding your hands up, hands either side of you, tummy in. I need to bring my left hand to my, either my right thigh or right floor, but right thigh is probably quite nice. And my 
left, my right hand, sorry, is behind me. I'm lengthening, so I'm breathing in. And as I'm breathing out, I'm just turning slightly. My head is the last thing to turn. My shoulders are slightly lower. So breathing in, just slightly lengthening your body, breathing out, turning as little as much as you would like. When you turn, it's like um, almost squeezing out a sponge where you can bring fresh blood to your um, system and go, you go back the other way. So just lengthen your body and come back to the centre. We're going to compensate afterwards. So tummy in and then just take my right hand to my left thigh, holding it for support. My left hand is behind, so I'm lengthening my body and then breathing out. I'm just very gently turning, inhaling. Breathing and breathing out. Inhaling, breathing and breathing out. Turn. But your head is the last thing that you turn, the last consideration. You're turning from the center of your body, almost from your from your tummy area. You turn. Start from the base and knees up. Shoulder is low. And then release that, come to the center, and now just come forward. Slide in, you're just compensating that twist movement, that rotation movement by coming forward with your back. Taking it in and an out breath. And then finally, just to come to um, a gentle relaxation. So you can either sit and breathe and notice your breath. Or you can come to a lying position just for a few seconds to let the practice that we've done today settle in the body. So either, whichever you like. And wherever you find yourself, bring your attention to the base of your spine. And almost a little bit beyond the base of your spine, that space beyond the, the base of your spine. And this connects to your sacral, your, your base Muradhara chakra. It connects to the elements of earth and it connects to your basic instinct of survival. We share the basic chakras or energy systems with the entire animal kingdom, we're all the same. However sophisticated and civilised we think we are, our basic instincts connecting to our basic survival and actually reproduction as well are, are common across the animal kingdom. Breathing in and out at that space. And then very gently in your mind's eye move up along the spine just slightly as inside the spine, inside the just the other side of the lobby, outside bits of the spine. And you're moving up to between the tailbone, the base of the spine, space beyond, and the navel. So it's a lower abdominal area. In everybody, it's slightly different, but just settle on a part deep within your abdominal area. And focus as you breathe in. Imagine breathing in fresh healing energy and breathing out anything that you don't want. And this connects to the element of water in this system, there are different systems, and connects not surprisingly to the kidneys and the bladder of course. And the kidneys connect of course again to our adrenals, our stress uh, centers just above the kidneys they're connected to so much else in our mind and body. So imagine breathing in, relaxing that area, that fluid area. The water element. And 
And then in your mind's eye, just move it up a little bit further along the spine to behind the navel. And this is the um, navel, manipura, solar plexus area. Solar plexus is a little bit higher, but all this area is connects to, of course, our digestive system. But it also connects to our inner power, how we present to the world. And in women, it's one of the areas that can be often be quite, um, uh, not all women, but it can be, it, it, it's often a weaker area. We don't step into our assertiveness quite so, so much sometimes, not always. So here the element is the element of digestion, the element of fire, where our food gets transformed into energy for the body. And as I said, it connects to all our um, digestive enzymes. Each energy point connects into part of our endocrine system. Breathing in and out enables strengthening our digestive system. Again, in Chinese medicine, the digestive system is very much viewed as fundamental to our entire health. It's not what we eat, it's what we digest. And then in your mind's eye, moving up to behind your heart, just in front of you, in front of you. It's a spine, but just inside the spine, at heart level. And the heart is the last of one of the basic chakras of the energy centers that we share. We share all the animal kingdom, but then it starts to be apart. So the heart, fulfills many functions, both physically, but we're starting to move now also into the mental aspects. So of course, it's our center of um, love and compassion, center of kindness. If there's too much energy running through here, someone can be very, uh, perhaps, aggressive. And if there's too little energy running through this center, they can be quite timid. So the heart needs to be balanced, and the heart is linked to the ego. So again, too much energy, and the ego can be burnt. We have people with a tendency of heart attacks, very much linked to, uh, and again, aggression. And I'm generalizing, of course, that the heart here is um, the Anahata chakra in the Sanskrit system. And it links to the sense of touch. Thymus gland is slightly above the heart, as well in the glandular system. And our healing hands, a sense of touch, breathing in and out through the heart. And then just mentally moving up a little bit further to the throat area, behind the throat area, breathing in and out. In some of the traditional systems, um, and you might know more about this than me, the Egyptians, they have a scarab, some colour here is often blue, the thyroid, and the parathyroid, part of our metabolic control. But the thyroid also links to part of our uh, adrenal systems, part of our exhausted adrenals can uh, connect into the thyroid in terms of autoimmune conditions. And we've balanced the thyroid by moving our neck in various ways, turning our heads. And we've also started to uh, look at balance as well. And then moving up and bringing our focus a little bit further to the forehead, the space between our eyebrows, that bend to the centre of our forehead, the third eye, connects to the pineal and the pituitary, but it connects also to our intuition, but also our centre of knowledge. Connects to the ears, back of the throat, connects to um, aspects of our brain, of course. Breathing in and out here, balancing our left and right brain hemispheres as we've done. And then finally, bring your attention to the top of your head. This is where everything comes together the crown, the Sarasara chakra. Imagining, however, a white light. It's where everything unites. It's the center that connects us with the outside world where we cleansed our magnetic field. 
where we receive vibes from people, where we send out and communicate. It's our higher consciousness, our higher essence, whatever you like to call it. And I just imagine that breathing in through the nostrils, breathing in fresh energy to the head, third eye, up to the crown, like a shower, misting everything down inside your body, cleansing as it goes, taking with you anything you don't want, letting it be through salt and food. And once more breathing in through the nostrils, the air is slightly cool as you breathe in. To the centre of your head, like a shower, misting down everything that you don't want, and just leaving to the soles of your feet. And for our final breathing in through the nostrils, just pick a colour that you resonate with today, any colour, and breathe in that coloured air to the point in the centre of the head, cleansing your mind and cleansing your entire body as the air mists all the way down through. Backs of the eyes, the throat, the part of our immune system, all the way down the heart and lungs, stomach, all the way down through our internal organs, all the way down through as we pick up the apartment energy, the limitation energy, going down through our legs and then even through the soles of our feet. And you can then stay here on the mat relaxing and just drifting off. Or if you want to come back to gently connecting with where you are on that today and hugging your knees into your chest and taking your time to come back to a seated position, you're welcome to do that too. Just do whatever suits you. And take a bow for yourself today. And wish yourself a lovely day ahead. And if I'm not going to see you again the rest of this week, a lovely week ahead. Enjoy the sunshine. <laughs>